Darren Brown says that Hector Chadwick is one of the great unsung heroes of original and fooling magic. In fact, he goes further than that. Compared to Chadwick, Vernon is an insulting amateur and Slidini looks exactly like a rotten cow throwing paper about. Yikes. But really, who is Hector Chadwick and what has he published? This week, Vanishing Inc. dropped their latest hardbound book called The Definitive Mental Mysteries of Hector Chadwick. This book is a re-release of a 2007 book that became pretty hard to find and was very sought after by mentalists around the world. The words I just shared with you are from the introduction which has been written by Darren Brown from the original 2007 version of the book. So what are the characteristics of this book? As I mentioned, it is hardbound and it is approximately 250 pages. There are 11 routines, many essays, and of course a very tastefully done green silk ribbon bookmark. This edition is considered the definitive work because it is adding on to the original 2007 manuscript with two new routines, as well as several essays and some illustrations done by Hector Chadwick. The book is $60 at retail, so let's talk about whether this is for you. Hector Chadwick is the alter ego of Stephen Long. Or is it the other way around? How does that work? He is a stage manager, consultant, and assistant on several of the Darren Brown shows. He has worked very closely with both Darren Brown and Andy Nyman on many of these specials, which they both had some very lovely things to say about the book. He helped to write numerous award-winning specials that Darren performed. So with credentials like that, if you're into performing mentalism or even mental magic, then you're definitely going to want to pay attention to this book. Not only has Hector slash Steve consulted for and worked with Darren Brown, he is also a performing mentalist on his own right with several excellent reviews for the quality of his shows. So what has he said? Why should you care? And does it live up to the hype? Let's talk for a minute about who this book is for. What kind of performance conditions do you need to perform this material? The venue requirements to perform most of these pieces effectively will vary. There's a little bit of everything. Although I think the people who will get the most from this are the people who perform in a parlor or larger setting, but probably not quite to the level of a full stage theater production. Don't get me wrong, these items could be adapted to be performed either in that larger stage setting or in a smaller, more intimate one, but not everything will play quite as well or even at all in one of those extremes. To give you a few examples, the parlor setting will be perfect for some of the items like his key psychometry routine, his tossed out Q&A, and his paper airplane chair test. To my way of thinking, those won't work quite as well in the very intimate environments, but if you have even a fairly small room, I still think it'll play well. Based on my own personal experience in performing mentalism, I could see a lot of this playing well for those corporate banquet type settings if you find yourself in those places a lot. However, that's not to say that everything requires a bigger setting. There are also quite a few intimate pieces that you could perform, whether you're at lunch or in your own house at the living room style shows where people are sitting around talking. To give you a few examples of the pieces that will play for those more intimate gatherings, the Equivoke section is definitely going to play for the smaller, more intimate groups, as well as some of the card pieces, which include a red or black prediction style routine where you have cards under a table, and his routine Shriek, which would also be able to play for a larger group, but will still work in the smaller gatherings. To give you one more example of the venue playing a part in the material you could use from this book, an astrological aside will only work if you find yourself doing large shows. It won't work for the gang down at the pub. So what kind of skill level do you need or what kind of difficulty are the routines? This is intermediate style stuff. So if you've been performing mentalism or mental magic for any length of time, you'll fit right in with this and be comfortable in no time performing the routines. But like a lot of mentalism, there's not so much dependency on slights, so that's not too difficult, but you will need the presentational ability to carry off an effective mentalism presentation. So what about the writing style? It's definitely written in an engaging and humorous style. It's not exactly formal. There's some sarcasm, some witticism, some humor woven throughout, but definitely everything is written comprehensively and you'll have no problem understanding what it is you need to do to pull off these effects. It is quite text dense. And although the advertisement talks about hand illustrations in this new definitive version, I counted 13 drawings throughout the entire book. So I don't think they're really a significant part of the reading experience. 
what did I think of the material? For the most part, this is my style of mentalism. As already mentioned, I perform a lot in the type of conditions that I believe this book was written for, which is basically corporate banquets or non-stage type shows. And I'm sure that I definitely will use some of this material. Perhaps even more interesting to me than the techniques of the effects were the plots and the essays that went along in this book. I found them to be thought-provoking, interesting, and compelled me to think about presenting my mentalism in different ways. Some of the essay topics include thoughts on getting participants to write down or commit to their thoughts, on using playing cards in mentalism, which I know can be a hot topic, how to work with the one ahead principle, characteristics of presenting effective predictions, which is always a challenge, the two types of audiences that you're likely to encounter and how to deal with and present to each. Some thoughts on scripting, which actually reminded me of an abbreviated version of Ryan Kane's book, Out of Stock. And finally, using disclaimers and mentalism. What should you do in your own shows? Most of these essays were short, sweet, and to the point. In fact, some of these were so short, I found them to be more of a humorous anecdote than a real thought-provoking essay. However, in some of the more meaty essays, it definitely provoked me into thinking about how I could present more effectively in my mentalism. The crediting was excellent, so you'll generally be able to see how far back an idea goes and potentially have more reading to do in your own library. To me, perhaps the strongest point in this book, and kind of brings us back to Darren Brown and what he had to say about this book, it's the presentations themselves. I think if this book were simply a book of methods to perform effects, it could have been condensed into a much smaller book. That's not a complaint though. Let me elaborate. What I'm saying is that he gives you a full script and presentational hook for everything that he's giving you in this book. These presentations are super engaging and I found myself riveted to reading through the story that he was telling the audience. And frankly, it will give your audiences a lot to think about long after the performance is over. So will I use everything in this book? No way. I never use everything in a book because I'm not Steven any more than I'm Max Maven. But typically, if you get one or two ideas from a book, that's what I'm going for. And for me, there were two great big takeaways from this book. One was his discussion of Equivoke. I think it's probably the most thorough explanation and understanding of how to present this effectively that I've ever seen in a book. And a tool like Equivoke can be used almost anywhere and in any routine. So while he gives you several effective presentations for the technique, really you're getting ideas that could go beyond what he's teaching you in the book. Plus the second thing is that Hector focuses in on the little subtle details of performing a trick. Really the things that just take it to that next level. There were so many subtleties in here that I found myself nodding in agreement as I was reading and will have an impact on my magic. I totally appreciate his way of thinking. I left reading this book with a lot of ideas and most of them have to do with the presentational aspects of the tricks. The method for Shriek, the new trick that was written for this definitive edition, has been in print before, but the presentation is highly compelling. And to me, it should be required reading for anyone who wants to demonstrate the impossibility of a card trick to an audience. Of course, his presentational hooks have to be for the right kind of audience, and it's the kind of audience to whom I find myself presenting most of the time. People with a little bit more attention span than a quick bar trick. Your audiences will vary, but I'm telling you that most of this stuff will not play quickly. So if you're working with people with short attention spans, this may not be the type of material for you. So what's the value proposition? The book is $60, which seems to be pretty much a standard amount for hardcover books of this quality these days. It is a Vanishing Ink release, so you know it's done with the highest ideals in mind and will be a lovely addition to your library. If you like pictures, well, this book doesn't have any. However, I'm not really a fan of the oversized pictures in books anyway, so it definitely fell to my liking. If you're a mentalist or you like to perform any kind of mental magic, I definitely think you'll walk away with something and potentially a few things from a book like this. And if the cost is an issue, this week you can apply code HECTOR at checkout at Don's and get this for $54 shipped. Back to the beginning of the episode, Darren Brown is arguably one of the greatest mentalists of all time and certainly one of the best magical performers of our generation. While his words at the beginning of the introduction were not actually written about Hector, 
I believe Darren intended them to apply to Hector, and I believe you'll find them to be true about the book if you choose to pick it up as well. I recommend this book if you're into mentalism and you'd like to hear a fresh new take on the subject from someone who has the ear of the likes of Darren Brown. As always, my friends, I appreciate you watching, and until next time, keep reading.